Hi everyone, it's Kat here, back again for a quick video. Well, I hope it'll be a quick video. I want to sneak in um, my tag for the 52 tags handmade. Um, it's, it's actually handmade. Uh, it's being held by Anne Brook, textile artist. I will put a link to her channel below, um, but she has probably been the lady that has started this slow stitch uh, movement. So. I uh, definitely want to enter the challenge this year. I think it's a great idea. So uh, the idea is that you get yourself some tags. Now this tag here, um, I got the die cut a while ago, had it in my, my supplies. It is four inches by three inches, which is what Anne suggests is a good measurement. And I have cut out 52 of these tags. Um, it actually wasn't that hard to do really because I had some uh, a pad with this craft um, brown cardstock and I ripped off three sheets at a time and I was able to get six per page. So yeah, it was only it took me no time really. The only problem was was the hole was just a little bit small to um, fit on this um, book binders ring I think that's what they're called and so what I did was I just got my Fiskars uh, punch and I just slightly punched the hole a little bit bigger so I will take one off um, I'm just a little bit concerned because I mean it's quite a thick cardstock but I'm just a bit worried that eventually because I've a double punch the hole like that so what I might do is just put an eyelet in there later on so this week's challenge which is the first challenge for the year is all white so I've uh, grabbed some white things but I have pulled out a tin and um, I'm starting to gather my supplies so I've got this white um, it is well, it's made in England and it's a crochet cotton and I've just got a needle book. Um, I've got some, these are little applique pins and a little safety pin. This used to be my mum's. I've taken this, uh, it had this horrible green felt. <laughs> so I took that out and I've replaced it with this one. At some stage, I'd like to make myself a needle book, but this, this will do for now. Um, now I found this little um, white, little bit of tatting flower that I've got here. Also, I've got this date stamp, so um, it's got a uh, number six I chose, which was completed. I like that because this year, for me, it's going to be about completing um, completing things. <laughs> so anyway, I've got, I've got my little box ready to go. All right, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, so... I've, I've got hopefully I've got all my supplies around me so I've done my um, my tags they're ready to go so each week I should be able to get going with it all so I've just got a bunch of um, I've just sort of gone through and just pulled out anything white which luckily I have ordered these lovely laces um, last late last year so I will um, I'll actually link the video of some of the um, hauls that I ordered through Etsy and I got these lovely white trims which I'm not normally a white person so it was just lucky I ended up having these in my stash so I've got some beautiful lovely trims to work with and I've got that I've got some white ribbon I've got that so I don't know what I'll end up using but I thought well I'll just pull out anything that remotely looks white but there's a couple of things in here and I found this I didn't think I had anything with tatting and I have been looking long and hard for it but I did find that um, when I was sorting through my things so I do have one little piece of tatting but I would absolutely love to get some more of this tatting so if anybody knows where I can get them it would be really appreciated appreciative if someone would just pop a comment in the link I've got this beautiful white lace doily which I've been dying to cut into but I haven't had the suitable projects I'm hoping to use some of that okay so I've got some more white eyelet lace so I've got this so I would like to 
definitely I've got this um, pure linen lace now it is going to be a little bit big but we're allowed to hang overhang so yeah um, I'm gonna lose a little bit but I'm gonna get most of it in so I just need to cut cut that um, okay so where do I make my cut I've got my rotary cutter here so we're gonna start with that so I think um, all right, if I line it up against the five inch mark there and I know so it's three inch by two inch I may have given you the wrong di dimensions but it's three inch by two inch okay so that means that I want this to be two inches Out there here we go oh my goodness this is the best piece so I hope I don't get this wrong <laughs> A nice sharp blade in there and it's not doing a thing and it would help if I pulled the blade back okay let's try that again yeah that definitely made a cut I will I want to I want to take that bit there so let's go across like that okay so I think I've got that yep well um All right, so I can put that away. Okay, so the theme for this week's, the, being the first tag for the challenge, is white, all white. And the idea is, is that Anne is going to give us a prompt each week and then we can uh, go ahead and um, make our tag and I'm trying to work out which is the right way and I think I think it's that way okay so I'm gonna have that like that okay um, could have gone a bit wider but never mind okay so go like that so then I need a piece of trim up the side there. So it's about auditioning things. the right way there I like that so that's a possibility yeah I think out of everything I've got I think that is what I like so I'm just going to snip one there like that okay so I definitely like this um, it's just what do I take Right, I like that. So I've got my embroidery scissors. I'm just going to pop that over there for now. And I'm just going to carefully cut out this flower. Now I'm just going to see, oh, yeah, I might cut. I might cut that one because it's kind of in the middle, in the middle there. So it's going to do the least amount of damage. So the idea of slow stitching is that it's um, you take your time with it and you relax. I mean, I'm, I've been busy this week and I go back to work on Monday 
um, so I did want to get this one in. But um, Anne's talking about that on Fridays she's going to release her prompts. So um, that kind of does work out for me because I, I sort of sometimes have a half a day. I do have a half a day, but sometimes I use the afternoon to catch up on things for the week. Um, but I'm trying to make it so that I dedicate half of a Friday and then the weekend to my YouTube and my Etsy shop. So um, that will work out well for me if she does release them on the Monday. So I'm just tidying up these um, little bits here. So the idea is, is that she has got the rules, but she said that if you don't feel like doing something one week, that's fine. Like if you don't want to follow her prompt you, and it doesn't resonate with you, you can um, do your own thing. So we'll see how we go. So I'm just trying to work out. I think I might put that exactly there. Now, um, I've got these buttons which I want to use. I explained in my fabric pack um, video that I had a top and I sat one night and I undid all of the buttons. There was quite a lot of buttons on there and there were bigger buttons too, but these, these are left over. But also um, there, are, there were some little seed beads that were in between. So here they are here. Now, funny thing is I, I was watching um, Rachel's uh, you know, from Roxy Creations, and she, she brought out the same um, bead tray. And it's funny, you know, because if you watch my craft room tour, you'll see that I'm quite into organising my supplies. And um, I was looking for a way to organise my seed beads as well. And um, she pulled out this um, this tray, and I literally got mine two days ago, and I had no idea. Um, I just wanted to have a good way of um, organising my seed beads so um, <laughs> I couldn't believe it when she pulled out the little container and I'm like oh that's exactly what I've got so I actually did keep the um, container like the the box um, so that's the box that came in just in case you're watching and you're from Australia and you're interested so um, I did order it on Amazon and it was $60 that included um, shipping and um, on the um, just on the back here um, it's Elizabeth Ward bead storage solutions but I will link I'll try and find the link where I bought it and I'll put that in my um, description because okay sixty dollars it's a bit pricey but um, you get 50 there you, you can get several different sizes I decided to go with the 50 and um, it did all of mine it did all of mine um, plus I've got one and a half rows free well actually probably really two and a bit rows but I also put my charms in here um, so what I'm thinking is that um, I'm going to expand my my bead collection and I might do one for my charms and then I'll do one for my beads because I want to get more into the fabric side of things and I think that that will be just amazing to be able to sew beads and things on. So anyway, I just thought I would share that. <laughs> so I did want to definitely put some of these on here. Um, now I don't know if I want to put the little ones because I love these little these little buttons. I don't know if they're shell. Um, but they kind of feel like it and they've got a sh that shimmer so I, I don't know I, I bought the top many years ago and I did wear it a few times but then it just sort of sat around and uh, I was going to throw it one day because it, it kind of got a little bit yellowing because it was white and um, oh that's only got one so that's really more like a bead it's got one hole but that's all right we can deal with that um, so I always like to go in threes. So I don't know. There's that one. But I wanted to. Um, well, what I could do possibly. No, but then that's going to cover up the pretty white lace. Or what I could do 
is I think I like I think I like one of these for sure um, now okay, I'm liking liking this are we taking too long I think she said you needed to the faffing she you needed to give yourself a time limit no it's too heavy okay Sorry, I'm just concentrating and that's why, um, and I think I'm just going to do a little bit of beadwork, beadwork in that centre bit, I like that, yeah, alright, so I'm going to go with that, um, I don't know if I need something across the top there, I sort of feel like that's a raw edge and it needs to be covered over. It might be too much. Um, oh yes, I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll go like that just to finish it off. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So you only need the tiniest <laughs> amounts of things. I think I'll go like that. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, now, so my idea is is that these were the beads that the seed beads that came with the buttons. So my my I'm thinking I will. Um, just scatter some across in the middle there so I'm going to now pin this it's a lovely project to do of an evening I think these are just little applique pins and I got them from my local um, quilting shop that's quite local to me But um, I love the idea of just taking your time with this. So I don't know if I'll bore you with me stitching. I might do a few stitches just to start off and just show you the process. And um, you can just decide whether you want to watch it or just skip it over. a little piece of wadding that I've cut in there I'm so pleased that I can use up all these lovely little bits I've been saving them and saving them and thinking oh what am I ever going to use these for and then every time I've gone to use them for a project I'm like oh I don't want to cut that oh no I don't want to cut that it's so pretty but this is just perfect absolutely perfect and it's a lovely way to recycle things that we don't we just don't use them, they just sit in boxes and just never really get looked at. Okay, so I just put my buttons to one side. Now I have done some, so I've already threaded my cotton and um, now she says to start in the middle, that's her preference. And then she does little couching stitches. Now to me, this is like when I used to have to do hemming 
my mum taught me how to hem so this is how I'm doing it but she calls them stabbing stitches so you just poke your needle through and you just catch the tiniest amount of thread okay that just was a bit of linen that came out probably from where I had cut the hanky so you just literally stab the fabric and you won't see the back because we're going this is the bit that we're going to glue down and you just catch just a few little threads and then you pull it to the back um, okay that I have done slightly wrong I made a bit of a boo-boo there as Rachel would say um, okay so the way I've done that is that it's across the petal so you don't really notice it okay so we start again so you come up through the back and then just about in the same spot that was the boo-boo I made is that I didn't go back down in the same spot and then you come across and then you come up from underneath you just grab grab a few threads and then you come back down over so it's called like a stabbing stitch so you're sort of stabbing roughly in the same spot but just moving over ever so slightly now this is where I'm coming off the edge a bit here because this is where all the lacy bits are that's okay all right so I'll just come down so I'm just working my way around and securing the flower and then come back down again okay the other thing I've been getting into and then you yarn your fabric um, sorry your thread sometimes twists a little bit so I just let let my thread hang loose and I let it untwist a little bit okay and then so because the th the layers of fabric can sometimes be a, quite thick I think it's good to use a, a new needle and have it sharp now this is probably more of a basting needle because it's a longer needle but when I come and do the beading bits I am going to change over my needle and that's a finer a finer needle so as I'm going around I'm also um, checking that I'm not puckering up my fabric so that it will hopefully lay flat I'm, I'm certainly <laughs> no expert this is kind of like a beginner thing for me as well but um, I remember sewing a lot when I was younger I used to do girls brigade and I used to have to sew on my own badges on my uniform and you know I have done bits of sewing along the way but the reason I love the idea of this um, slow stitching is I remember I used to be really intimidated by um, embroidery because everybody was so particular about how they stitched and they had the most beautiful neat stitching and so it just I just used to think I just was all fumble fingers and I was never skilled enough to do it a lot of it is from actually Girls Brigade and I remember going on camps and things and seeing absolutely beautiful needlework and just admiring it so much but thinking oh my goodness I could never do that but with this slow stitching it the idea is is that you actually make your imperfections um, neat and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wonky it's, it just adds to the character of it so that's why I love the idea of slow stitching plus it's just such a relaxing thing to do so yep yeah, all right I've come around there 
So we can take that one out. Okay. So um, now I can come across and I can... Um, Alright, so if I come across that way and then I'll just have to come back. Hold on. Um, okay, so if I come along here, I'm trying to figure out how I can do this best without breaking my thread. Mind you, I might run out of thread, so I might have to anyway. But I'm just kind of stitching along here, doing my stabbing stitches and just working my way to the end here so that I can um, go down and then come back up again. I'm just going to put that one in there. I think I'm going to run out of thread, so I'm probably going to need to re-thread my needle anyway. So um, I'm going to take that one out. Okay, so again, I come up and I just do my stabbing stitches. And I just sew this little piece of trim just to the lace. It's so beautiful and fine. I used to know these hankies as bridal hankies. And I think that's why whenever I've seen them, I, I grab them because I just remember um, knowing a lady who used to make handmade lace hankies and she told me that they were bridal hankies and they were just so beautiful and so fine but mind you I've, I've never found I think this is the only white one I've ever found okay so all right so that's sewn so I think I just come back up again rather than cut it off and then that way I've just got a continuous piece of thread. It doesn't take that long really. And this is a perfect end of the day sort of project that you can do. The reason I um, pull my... <laughs> I stop and I put my needles away is that I've got pets and we tend to walk around the house with no shoes on and I would hate anybody to step on a needle so um, when my partner saw me starting to pull out the sewing supplies <laughs> and do my fabric clusters he's just like uh, you be careful of those needles please <laughs> in fact um, he was telling me the other day that he had this stabbing pain in his in the arch of his foot for about three weeks and every time he'd sort of step on it in a certain angle it would um, it would be quite painful and uh, the other day he was looking at it and he thought what is that why oh okay nearly made another boo-boo so I've come up and I want to go back down in a very similar spot to the hole Okay, and don't pull because you'll pucker up your fabric and you don't want to do that either. Uh, yeah, so anyway, he was, um, just to make sure, yeah, I am getting that. Um, so he was looking at it and he thought, is there a splinter in there? So he started kind of like squeezing it and he thought he felt something hard in there. And um, next thing he knew, it sort of popped through and it was a sliver of glass <laughs> that was in his um, in the arch of his foot and it had been there for about three weeks, but it popped out quite cleanly. So, um, yeah, he's not in pain anymore. 
I just want to go the right way. <laughs> now, coming up to the top here, I'm definitely going to cut my thread because I think I need to stitch that in a way that it's going to be a bit of a feature because um, like it's a raw edge but basically it's another raw edge but it's just a slightly neater raw edge <laughs> than what was there before so um, I'm gonna have a go at doing a slightly neater stitch um, without being too neat because that's the idea isn't it that it doesn't have to be perfect in fact I think there's something quite nice about it being a little bit imperfect I know when I go thrifting and op shopping and things and I see for example I see that stitching on the back I think I love that I love looking at that okay I think I'm just going to have enough thread to finish off this. It's quite late here. It's 7.24. Um, we don't have Isla this weekend. We have her next weekend. And uh, my partner is um, working, but he will finish um, 9.30 tonight. So I'm here with the pets and uh, I've had a huge day actually. Um, I did my listing on Etsy, did a filming. This is my second filming. But as I said, I'm going back to work on Monday. So I um, kind of want to try and get ahead with a few things. Okay, so I've come across there. Alright, so I'm just going to snip that. Okay, I think that's come together beautifully. Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple of little securing stitches on the back. Yeah, so when um, Mike gets home uh, we're going to watch, finish off watching this movie. I think it's called Tenant, and it is a science fiction. I might just do another knot there because I don't want that to unravel. Uh, yeah, so we're going to watch this Tenant, and um, we're going to go back and watch another like 15 minutes of it again because uh, where we left off last night because it's a long movie. And uh, we found it a little bit confusing, so um, I might even watch it again because it's quite an intriguing film. But yeah, it was just a little bit confusing, <laughs> the storyline. It was sort of jumping a bit all over the place, um, but we kind of got the hang of it. Okay, so this is actually um, some cotton. Um, no, I won't. I will... Um, uh, here we go. I will do this again. Okay. Now, trying to thread this is going to be the challenging bit. Get my needle out again. believe I got it <laughs> okay I think the more you sew the better you get at it now I do want to learn how to do this quilters knot I've tried it a couple of times but I can't seem to bring my knot down right to the end of the thread um, so that's one thing when I do this workshop slow stitching workshop which I'm going to start doing hopefully next week they said the 15th of January but I haven't heard anything yet um, I've put my name down on my phone number and they said they'll get in contact so hopefully enough people have um, put their name down for it to go ahead I was wondering whether I might just attach those two little bits there 
that kind of seems to be hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I've got this dirty. Well, that's done the bottom. That'll be done the bottom. So, yeah, that's okay. Okay, I'm just going to stitch these. Just the way it's cut, it's kind of hanging. Hanging there. I hope I've been in frame. I'm inside because it's very hot here in Perth and um, my craft room is lovely as it is. It hasn't got air conditioning so um, unfortunately on really hot days I can't really go in there. Not, not for, for long anyway. Um, okay okay so I ran out of uh, video because <laughs> uh, obviously I had been recording for so long so um, just gonna I'll probably end up editing a lot of this to make it shorter I'm just gonna come across here and just do a straight stitch across here Ow. That's what happens when you sew in the direction of the pointy bit of the needle. So I think I'll take that one out now. <laughs> We've got a new TV. We got it just before Christmas. Bit of a spur of the moment thing, um, but they were doing such an excellent deal on the TV and we've wanted one for many years so um, we decided to get one and um, it's a Sony Bravia TV and the um, picture is so clear it's unbelievable you see so much detail and it's made me look at videos in a new light <laughs> so um, I was watching a sewing video the other night and the lady was um, talking about like the different needles and using a thimble and she had all these little prick marks <laughs> on these two fingers um, that's how fine the um, that's how fine the picture is is that I could see um, all the little prick marks on her fingers <laughs> as she was holding the thread <laughs> and the fabric okay so I've just done a stitch across the top there um, now I've had another idea but I'm definitely going to need to swap over so I'm just going to finish this off because I think I'm finished with this um, thicker cotton but just got these like little loose bits of thread which I'm going to snip off just to tidy it up a little bit there we go and I'm just going to give that a couple of little stitches in the back there just to secure it okay okay all right so I think I am finished with this one now so that can go in there now I was thinking what I might do is um, come across here now I was watching Rachel's videos and she oh gosh I've got a knot in there now I'm trying to get this finished and Murphy's Law Um, there we go, got it. Okay. Um, straighten that up. Okay. So I'm coming through the back. Yep, so as I was saying, I was watching Rachel's 
videos and she happened to sew some seed beads on and so she was showing how to do them so she I'm just going to snip that tail off because it's a bit long okay so if I remember correctly I think what she said was to do one kind of securing stitch then come back up up again now I'm trying to think of the best way to do this And then she put her needle through the bead and then she stitched back down again. Now um, do I want to go through that again? I don't kind of feel, well maybe I do, gosh I am not going to get this. This is such a fine bead. Let's see how we go. Yeah, that is definitely more secure. So I think at this point I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back when I've finished. Okay, so I um, finished off stitching on that top piece and I added some seed beads. Now um, I'm pretty much finished my piece and I've got this blank little piece just in the middle there. I'm not sure, I like it blank but I equally like that little bit there so I think I've decided that I will put that there because it's such a pretty little piece and really when am I going to have an opportunity to stitch it onto something so um, I'm going to just come in and do the stabbing stitches again just to secure that down so bear with me it won't take long such a pretty little piece I went to a, um, a bit of a vintage market that was run by some um, by a Jew local Jewish community and uh, they had this crafting section and um, nobody was going near it and so I went in there and I just found the most amazing stuff and this this was part of it just this little bag of all these little flower bits there's not many there's probably maybe about six of them in there maybe eight at the most but these cute little hats in there as well so I'm hoping I'll have the opportunity to incorporate those into some projects okay so I think that's enough to secure that down now so yeah all right so just do a couple of stitches on there just to secure that All right, let's snip that off. So, all right, so I've got my little piece there. Now I need to put that onto my tag. And the way that Anne did was that she ran some glue so uh, I just thought I'd show you because I don't think I actually did end up showing you um, the buttons that I sewed on so I did the little seed beads across there and then I put my three little buttons across there and then you s oh that's the cat <laughs> something happened there they tolerate each other they're not best of friends or anything so um, but I'm sure she's fine She's just can be a little bit of a whinger sometimes. Okay. All right, so now it's time to put it onto the tag. Excuse my 
animals making noises. Okay, so I think I'm just going to run some glue just along the back there. And there we go. So there's my tag. Now it hangs over a little bit at the back. So the final step is to secure the tag. So I think like secure the fabric onto the back of the tag. So I think just stab that through there like so. Come down about halfway. Just make sure got that about there. And then come back through. Okay, so take that down to there. Okay, there we go. And come across like so. A bit like sewing a button. Okay, and then come across here. And then come across the top. Just make sure I've got that straight. Okay, hopefully I've got enough cotton. I think I measured it so that like roughly with the needle that I would roughly be able to make it and hopefully I can get the needle up because that's the problem isn't it as your thread starts to get short can you get the needle back up <laughs> and I think I'm going to struggle okay how am I going to all right, so what I'm going to have to do is snip that and then just dispose of my needle. Okay, get my glue. I think I can just poke this in there. my tag very very happy with that so thank you Anne that was absolutely lovely for my first tag for your 52 tag handmade challenge so I will take a photo of that and I will upload that to Instagram and thank you guys for watching hope you um, feel inspired to get into some slow stitching yourself and to it's not too late to enter the challenge okay bye